Okay, we got home and we got the Waku totally disassembled and I did not find part of the cap. I found some kind of buildup of gunk, but as you remember when I held the gun upside down and was working it, something did fall out. So there may have been a super small little remnant of a cap that got down inside there. But let's look at uh, what I found after I disassembled the weapon. Alright, once I took it apart, the only thing that fell out of action was this. But it's not, as you see, it's not a cap. It's more like a buildup of gunk. It's not a hunk of cap. And down inside here was a buildup of the grease. And that's because when I put it on the shaft, it just kind of went down and then came up in the area here with a hand in the back of the cylinder. So, in all honesty, if something did fly down in there, I can say it was very small, and only the one cap did that. That's the cap that part of it landed on my arm while I was shooting. Okay, so our other problem, if we look at the nipples, we see there's a huge buildup. There's a residue on these nipples, and the caps do fit on very tightly, so as this stuff builds up on there, which doesn't come off easy, don't just rub off, I think it makes the fit tighter. And if it builds up on the very ends, what's happening, and the reason I get the misfires is the caps are not going down all the way, and uh, residue is keeping it from seating properly. And the last one, I had two or three of those misfires. I pushed the caps as, as much as I really wanted to. I gave them a firm shove down in there, and they still did it. So, again, anything that's real tight and close, like these nipples, that's what you're going you're gonna to have to pay in the fact that it's going to cause that other style of uh, malfunction. So now I'm just going to clean her up and put this gun uh, away, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this. Alright, so was swapping out the nipples uh, and spending 40 bucks for that upgrade kind of worth it? I'm going to say it solved 90% of the problem, and even though I had one cap actually come apart and fly out of the gun, land on my arm, and I think a part of it went down into the action, one little tiny part. But if you watch my other videos, when I fired this gun in different uh, things, Cap jams with the factory nipples on the cylinder were far worse. I was getting the caps falling down into the action, being flattened out. You know, they must have dropped off the hammer and come down and drop inside this part of the frame here and would we'll, we'll lock it up. Um, or you'd have misfires. Now, I was getting misfires, but like when we looked at the nipples, what it was is it was hard to get the caps on these nipples once they got foul. I mean, it was it was tough to do it. So they are a precision made part, and they're made to where when they're clean and that a cap goes on or goes on there quite well. Okay, um, tight and it holds in place. So there ain't no fooling around having to pinch it or it drops off or whatever like I showed you. The factory one's 11 cap would drop off, but a 10 was so tight, the way it was a weird taper, I think the taper was greater. Uh, and I think the Italians make it so, with the variances between the U.S. grades and that, and one brand of caps is a little bit different in size than others. Okay, so the factory nipples, I think, are more or less made to where you can kind of get anything to work. All right were these a little bit more precision. So I'm going to say the idea of the little tiny flash hole dig, it kept the back pressure from throwing the spent caps 
back into the action. That did work, okay? Um, and you could see where some of them would go into the little notch and there'd be a deformation in that, but all of them basically stayed on the other side of the frame and inside the notches where the nipples were, is where most of the cap, cap fragments stayed. <clears throat> what was happening with the <clears throat> factory uh, nipples is the cap fragments were either sticking on a hammer or blowing back in a way that when you pulled the hammer back they would fall down inside the frame and then down into the uh, action itself. So yes, this did take care of that problem. I did not have them horrible jams where I had to reach in and you know, it was constantly scraping cap fragments out of the inside of the frame and that. So that did stop. That It does work as advertised. The only problem is the fit of the cone of the nipple itself is so precise that once it gets fouled, it becomes difficult to see the caps. But we didn't have the... the jams where I'd have to disassemble the gun in the field. I mean, them horrible jams. So it did work. But there's a downside to it, okay? Uh, so as advertised, that smaller little flash hole does work and there's less pressure coming back and just disintegrating the caps and fragmenting them. They did split, they did fragment some of them, but it was to a degree where, like I said, it stayed all on the other side of the frame. So I'm going to say they work, but there's, there's a downside is once they get fouled, they become difficult to get the caps to seat, and they cause them weird little misfires where when you hit the cap, it's not all the way home. But as you've seen in the last series, the second smack, they went off have to look at it that way. So I'm going to say, yeah, it's a success. I, you know, I ain't going to say it's a total waste of money. Uh, it didn't 100%, you know, give me guaranteed 100% functioning. It kind of created another problem. But that problem is easier to deal with than crap falling down inside and totally locking up your mechanism. So we're going to say it's a success. All right. And uh, we'll get out and we'll try the other brand on the other firearms and see how that works here uh, maybe this week. Okay, so stay tuned, guys.